Hi, my name is Mathia Gans, and today I will be talking to you about constitutional rights within disaster policies. Without including protection of constitutional rights within the policies, it can lead to violating those rights. The reason constitutional rights are so important is, as Benjamin Franklin has said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. There are many key constitutional rights that are important for planning for disasters. These include Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, which provides for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. Article 1, Section 9 concerns the writ of habeas corpus, which is the right to appear before a judge or into court. The First Amendment protects freedom of speech. The Second Amendment protects the right to bear arms. The Fifth Amendment involves trial and punishment and compensation for takings of private land for public use. The Sixth Amendment is the right to a speedy trial. The Eighth Amendment prevents cruel and unusual punishment. The Tenth Amendment involves state rights, and the Fourteenth Amendment involves citizenship rights. In addition to the key U.S. constitutional rights, there are key acts as well as state constitutional rights. The Posse Comitatus Act passed at the end of Reconstruction intended to limit state and local governments from using federal military personnel to enforce laws. There are limits to the act and it has been suspended in the past for different reasons, but some suggest that suspending the Posse Comitatus Act during disasters would help ensure safety. Some state considerations include the fact that each state has its own laws regarding personal handgun use and possession. Florida, for example, allows for concealed carry permits and currently controversial stand your ground law. Some states have passed laws allowing confiscation of firearms during an emergency. Some examples of violations and complications of these laws and acts are, include the justice system collapse during Hurricane Katrina. The Posse Comitatus Act prevented military from acting as law enforcement. There was a suspension of habeas corpus. There were temporary jails established, which have been referred to as Greyhound jails. And there were lengthy imprisonment for many state prisoners. In some cases, there are people who spent more time waiting to stand trial than they would have served had they actually been convicted. During 1798, the Alien and Sedition Acts were passed during naval hostilities with France. During World War II, there were Japanese-American internment camps set up, as well as placing Hawaii under martial law. The Confederacy established Andersonville Prison, which has actually been referred to as the first great concentration camp. Some things to consider is, is being at war a disaster? Certainly the Transportation and Safety Administration policies are in place to mitigate airline disasters from human acts. The TSA uses backscatter technology and pat-downs. According to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling in 2005, airport screenings of passengers and their baggage constitution, constitute administrative searches and are subject to the limitations of the Fourth Amendment. However, since September 11th, the costs of increased airline security exceeded $10 billion by 2008. In one example, in 2003, the cost of security screening in the Rochester, New York airport was higher than the cost of running the actual airport. When you actually bring up these costs of security to people, as I have done, what you often hear is that they would rather the money be spent so that they feel secure. There are guidance in developing policies. Um, the Rule of Law in Times of Major Disaster was published by the American Bar Association and these include principles that, such as the rule of law must be preserved when a major disaster occurs. And the pr preservation of the rule of law requires proactive planning, preparation and training before a major disaster strike. There are pl many other principles that they have included in this publication. They're very important. And as well, as well, there's the Human Rights and Natural Disasters published by the Interagency Standing Committee. These deal obviously with the human rights, but 
one of the, some of the principles they have include every human has the inherent right to life which shall be protected by law and every human being has the right to dignity and physical, mental and moral integrity. Everyone has the right to be protected against acts of violence threatened or committed by private parties and other non-state actors. And they have many, many other principles in this publication they are very important. In conclusion, constitutional rights should always be kept in mind in an emergency and disaster planning. Decisions made will always be subjected to scrutiny, so make them ahead of time rather than waiting until you must make them. Decisions may have legal consequences. It's better to know ahead of time if you may face criminal or civil suits to mitigate the issue. Remember, the goals of emergency management are to save lives, prevent injuries, protect property, and protect the environment. If you incorporate constitutional rights in disaster planning, this helps to meet these goals. I will place my references in the comments section. I strongly recommend looking over these, these publications and it really gives you a good background for why constitutional rights are so important.